Hi everyone, Fresh here, and I'm here to talk about a few secondary uses for your laser aiming module. A quick note on lasers from high school physics. The term laser is actually an acronym that stands for Light Amplification by Stimulated Emission of Radiation. What this acronym is essentially describing is a device that works as an optical amplifier. It uses electrical energy to convert kinetic energy into light photons. These light photons will exit the laser aiming module as a collimated beam, which essentially means that the beam remains fairly small and concentrated out to fairly long distances. This property of lasers has some great utility in the tactical space for us. This allows us to perform something called active aiming during the day, in which you see a concentrated bright beam of light that you could just point on the target before engaging. Against an adversary, however, this is not tactically ideal. Therefore, many laser aiming modules may come with an infrared module, which allows you to still project a beam of light without it being immediately visible to others, unless they are wearing night vision. More on modules and reviews in a different video, however. In addition to active aiming, you could use your LAM to assess height over board differences over different distances. Your module is typically mounted to your handguard. Since this is a semi-fixed point on the rifle, you might notice at different distances when you point your reticle, or dot, that your laser and center of your reticle, or different crosshairs, may diverge, whether closer or further, but at certain distances may converge. Sometimes this helps you better maintain your zero. The typical practice here would be to find your desired zero at the distance you wish to engage. Once your reticle is properly lined up and centered at that distance, you can set your laser via your laser turrets back into that same aiming point, at least as close as you can. Your laser and your optic point of impact for that particular ammo, for that particular instance, are now co-witnessed together. And even your windage change based on receiver construction, stiffness, and whatnot. Dry practice naming at different distances may help see what that shift looks like. Another way you can use your LAM is as an onboard laser bore sighter. Let's suppose you have a fairly strong rail like a DD Riz or a Geisley Mark IV. Your LAM is fairly tightly mounted on and you've sighted to roughly where you wanted your optical zero to be. You want to switch your red dot out for an optic you haven't quite tried before. Let's suppose you get a 3x, a 4x, or 5x prism that you want to try out. You didn't bring a whole lot of ammo with you on the trip, unfortunately, because you forgot it in your box at home. How are you going to make this box last during your sighting session? It's actually quite simple. Turn on your visible laser, place it at the center of the target, find a stable position for your carbine, and simply move the scope's reticle to where the laser impact ends up being at that distance. If this distance is the same as what you set your laser to before, your first shot should be practically within an inch of your intended point of impact. Within three shots, you're pretty much sighted in, and now have to consider a height over bore at different distances inwards and outwards. And in keeping with Lent, our third Easter egg for our laser aiming module, a parallax assessment tool. In a lot of high-end variable power scopes, parallax is adjustable, so this may not be applicable as a trick here in this case. However, with red dots, prisms, and some smaller variable power setups, parallax becomes a very important part of your firing solution. Parallax simply refers to the apparent displacement of an object as viewed from two different points. Scopes from the factory may be given a 100-yard parallax rating, meaning that at 100 yards, there is a zero shift from different points, meaning if you move your head around in awkward positions, you won't see an apparent parallax shift, and you're more likely to hit your target even if your head is in an awkward position. One such intuitive way to check this with your laser aiming module is to point the laser at the target, line up your optic, and move your head up and down and side to side. The rifle should, of course, be somewhat stabilized. You'll notice through here, looking through the access door, that there are a few types of incidents in diffracted and reflected beams. Here's the actual beam as shown at distance. You can see that the close beam is moving quite a bit as you move your head around because it is very far away from the parallax inflection point. At about 40 yards where this cut tree trunk is, the actual laser impact point is not moving a whole lot. You can also see that it shifted away from the reticle at distance a little bit. This is a combination of the index of refraction of the screen door 
and the mechanical displacement of the lamb on the rail. You can see as I move closer to 70 yards in the far tree trunk, this parallax shift is almost imperceptible, as this optic is actually rated for a 100 yard parallax setting. If you have a variable power scope with an adjustable parallax, try for yourself. Different companies may advertise certain parallax distances or zero parallax shift, but the laser of truth never lies. These are some quick tips with Fresh. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the range.